This is uh, Morten from Inkish, and um, I am very pleased to introduce James from Atfos. And no, we have not talked about what colors our sweaters and shirts should have today. It is pure accident. But uh, when we talk about colors and things like that, uh, James, uh, uh, what do you think of the color? I mean, do you like? I think we've matched well this morning, Morten. <laughs> so, uh... Uh, next time we should, um, and maybe we should just uh, pick a Pantone color as a theme for our clothing for the next sessions, right? But uh, <laughs> joke aside, uh, welcome to Inkish, uh, James. Thank, thank, thank you, Morten. Thanks for having me here. Uh, it's a real pleasure to, to be with you this morning. And uh, we've both got such autumnal colors on, so um, looking forward to seeing, seeing you uh, at the end of this month in Innovations. Yeah, I look forward to that even more. And as uh, I think before we talk about AdFos and the technology, maybe you uh, make a little more formal introduction of who you are and what you do. Please. Yeah, so I'm uh, James Burbage and I'm the technical director from AdFos Digital Printing. Um, and uh, we're a Munich-based headquartered company. Obviously, as we covered this morning, Martin, I'm a Brit. Um, so I'm, I'm in the UK here. Uh, AdFos itself is headquartered in Munich. We have sales and service um, companies in the US, in Japan, here in the UK. Uh, all the manufacturing is, is based at our headquarters in Germany. Um, uh, and, uh, and when we look at, uh, maybe, maybe just to bring people up to speed before we talk, because I think you have a quite interesting uh, history as well. I was just thinking that maybe just to make sure that everybody understands what you do is basically you're the specialist in uh, drying of water-based ink, right? Yeah, so, so we, we, we came to this in a rather interesting way. Uh, so the, the, the ADFOS was founded from a group of scientists who uh, were in the EU Hermes space program and they were looking at the re-entry systems of uh, of, uh, of, of systems returning. So they were building large enclosures to be able to simulate those 16 minutes where the flames are coming. And um, and so they, they founded Adfos with this high knowledge of, uh, of thermal processing and this platform technology, ANIA, um, Advanced NIR. So this was, uh, this was 30 years ago. We were founded in 1994. Um, so next year we celebrate 30 years. And, and we didn't start in inkjet. We started in high-level thermal processing, steel applications, automotive coating. Um, and uh, we, we arrived at Inkjet in, in 1997 when Cytex, so f uh, now, now Kodak, asked for help with an Inkjet application to run 300 meters a minute uh, onto thermally sensitive train ticket paper uh, without uh, triggering the, the change of the, of the train just, ticket. Just to... Just to just to make it easy for you guys, right? So that was like yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Drying thermal-based paper. You 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 don't apply heat to it. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Over sixty-five <laughs> degrees, you're done. But please no. dry the ink. Um, and I, I think that'd be a yeah. big ask today, yeah. let alone twenty-seven years ago. So we, uh, with Adfos's technology, we were able to dry the ink that was applied at this high speed without triggering, without heating the paper, without triggering the temperature sensitivity of the thermal ticket. So uh, uh, this um, this kind of led the discovery for us into inkjet. You know, we realised that oh, the technology we already have that we're already using uh, in other industries is applicable for all water-based inkjet pre-processing. You know, we, we we came into the market and found our high energy density small dryer and um, uh, these reduced energy uh, requirements were just a perfect fit for for this emerging industry. Um, and we've uh, this this has been a learning experience for the whole company as well as the market has grown. I would say that it has maybe even become a learning lesson for uh, the world <laughs> to broaden it out because basically you are uh, capable of uh, um, drying or curing uh, um, uh, really fast, but you uh, but you are, it's basically you dry out the water. 
uh, of of the ink. So if it's a water-based ink, it dries out uh, almost instantly. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we like to say instantly, um, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'd, I'd like to get a process done within within half a second, um, which is qu quite instant. <laughs> uh, we always have to be careful, but yeah, we're we're targeting the fluid and the pigment and the polar molecules, and uh, and. So it's, it's just because I want everybody to understand this, because basically, um, just for, for, for comparison, if you have, let's say, a UV ink and you have UV curing, yeah. it's the polymers, sorry, the photo initiators <clears throat> that are, are curing based on the reaction to the UV. Uh, yeah. And with the and UV inks, it has advantages and disadvantages, but with the water-based ink, you, you cannot flash it with something... Uh, and if you use IR or if you need, need a, a hot air or something like that, it influences the process. It can be slower. It can, be, uh, it can also influence maybe even more the substrate. So what you have invented and what you do is basically something that doesn't apply heat mm -hmm. uh, as a part of the process of, of, of curing. And so when I say instant, I, I realize that you have a, a, a frame for instant uh, kind of thing. But basically that means that if you put Atfos uh, dryers on on an inkjet water-based inkjet machine you have similar uh, properties as if you were using a uv uh, based yeah, so, uh, uh, printing machine right? so i mean you know we're not uv um, to keep curing to one side we're strictly water-based uh, but <clears throat> so anir is is basically the combination of a very high energy transfer with photonic um uh, emission integrated with this controlled air ventilation mass transfer suction basis which which gives you this very very effective drying by direct liquid evaporation um, and not through mass heating so uh, it, uh, my simplistic way to explain it is putting a, a cold cup of tea in the microwave right um, uh, as a as a Brit this is a crime but, but people would do it you know it, we are heating the fluid not the cup right whereas taking that same cup and putting it in the oven you're doing a mass um, a mass heating of the ceramic cup everything to get the fluid hot so so Amy is working in that basic principle of hit targeting the fluid not the substrate um, and so that gives massive efficiencies innately because you, you just have less mass to heat right so um, it's a really interesting technology and, and I came from high-speed inkjet uh, and, and from within the market found Adfos and realized that, you know, it's great putting all of this wonderful fluid, the chemistries that were coming out, um, the capabilities of the head, but if you couldn't process it uh, without that causing damage to, mm. to the natural substrates, then you had just as equal problem. Mm. Um, so, so for me, it was a, an, instant, an instant drive, you know, it's a real enabler in the market to, to being able to help people achieve what they want. Mm. What, uh, how difficult is it when I look at, I mean, uh, one of the things that we're going to see at Hungry Invasion Days is, of course, uh, fantastic print samples with a high uh, ink coverage on, on the pages. Uh, how much of a challenge is it to apply even more ink to, to a substrate in, in, from an adverse perspective? perspective? I mean, I mean, look, I'm, um, I'm not taking away from the massive challenges that OEMs, ink manufacturers, head manufacturers do to get where we are, right? That's huge. Um, and uh, the market is all working very hard towards that. But we have to be thinking that on the other side, we could be liters of, of water a minute, right? Um, imagine filling your bath, evaporating your bathtub in an hour on a natural, uh, <laughs> natural piece of paper that's going to fall apart. You know, these are big challenges. Um, it's uh, it's understanding how you can handle the substrate, how you can handle the energy requirements, where the working windows are for these materials, for these fluids, and that takes us Adfos in the position of working with the ink manufacturers, the head designers, uh, the the integrators, the OEMs. It really puts us in a, um, uh, t a technology agnostic uh, spider web across the industry, which is highly interesting um, and, and not. Not simple. So does that does? Sorry to, yeah. Yeah, so, so, sorry to interrupt. So does that mean that that basically uh, the the collaboration you have with all the different uh, people that you just mentioned are basically the that is the components together that make sure that you can get a a, a high quality output out of the machine. So 
whether it should have one lamp or ten lamps or uh, you know basic so that is the, that is the kind of discussions you have with the OEMs and, oh, and, and also in the understanding of the ink. Certainly, certainly, absolutely. I mean, we, we have a platform technology, so it's a similar. Um, Let's, let's say it's, it's a platform technology and we must have thousands of different designs and, and really an OEM has a specific design for the requirements of the substrates and, and the inks and what market they're doing and, and those initial conversations, that testing, that stimulation um, with the OEMs to understand max energy density is applicable, resonance times, the what polymeric aspects are in the ink and how we're going to process them, those conversations and, and the final um, result is uh, heavily dependent on knowledge sharing and uh, and collaboration together and that's something that uh, I think that's something that within this market we do see across a wide range of, um, of providers and OEMs um, certainly the partnerships we see within OEMs as well um, are from leveraging leveraging knowledge right? does that mean that that uh... I mean, because of the close collaboration you have with the, all the uh, involved parts you just mentioned, does that also mean that 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 Atfos is not for an aftermarket, but that is more like an integrated part of a of a, a technology? Uh, we we do work in the aftermarket. This was very much a big uh, a big thing when we started. You'd buy one piece, one piece, one piece, and we we still support uh, clients doing that. Um, but that's now a very special breed mm -hmm. uh, of of end producer that is going down that run. Um, with, with the OEMs, we're certainly um, working pretty much as a as an OEM supplier now. So uh, certainly at Hunkler itself, you will see Adfos. Whether you know it is Adfos or not, that's not my decision to make. Um, I'm just there to support the companies being able to produce those fantastic uh, full color, full coverage samples, right? And um, the reason I'm asking you is also because, I mean, is, I mean, um, I remember I spoke to one of your colleagues earlier and, and we spoke about as, as you deliver most of your sales, I guess, to OEMs and, and, and become an integrated part of the machine. Um, Atfos as a brand, I mean, is still important because, I mean, an end customer who buys a machine, they should probably influence that they need to have the Atfos dryers. Uh, in the in the final installation, right? Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, that that is important, and some of the benefits of the technology, this low substrate heating, this um, th this targeting of the ink only. There are there are some markets where that's the immediate question the customer is asking. If we think about books in Europe, um, the the capability that the Adfos brings in the book market, you know, the the the, the the manufacturers are asking that to begin with. The customers are saying to the OEMs, hey, is there Adfos? Yes, no, right, done deal. Um, in some other markets, it's okay. not really known. That's nice, right? Yeah, I, I think that's a really nice um, mm. world to be in. That's the world I, I come from. Um, and it's fully, the benefits of Adfos are fully understood and appreciated. And, and those manufacturers are having those discussions based on, does your inkjet device come with ANIA or without? Uh, and other markets, I think it's more about uh, does it produce what I want, you know? Um, th these smaller uh, machines, these narrow web devices, uh, high capable, high color, the customer's looking for substrate range, they're looking for lay down capability, they're looking for durability in the finishing equipment, right? And I, I think there they're looking for the combined, um, the combined solution, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can't help thinking about it because you know there is a, as I said before, uh, a lot of discussions about going from from let's like say let's say analog uh, offset print to commercial inkjet, for example, right? And um, um, I think that speed is still like something where I think that the PSPs are considering is it fast enough for uh, I mean for replacing an offset machine. Mm -hmm. And and you see now uh, examples from from uh, from uh, vendors that you can configure the number of dryers on a machine basically yeah. to ensure higher quality, higher speed. Is that also a tendency you will see with with the Atfos drying thing? That basically, if I have an inkjet machine and most of my applications are uh, high ink coverage and I need to maintain my speed, then you will have a market for, for uh, implementing more ad for solutions into 
to achieve that uh, productivity? Uh, <clears throat> I think this is something that's been around for some years now, but in the much higher, much higher end, um, larger uh, uh, devices where the dryers can be a significant portion of the machine install cost. So we are now, let's say, seeing that move in um, in the narrow web uh, uh, industry that Uncle is serving. Uh, I, I'm trying to think, uh, Rico a long time ago started with additional drying systems. Screen very much uh, followed in that pattern in the last innovations when they released a modular drying solution where you could pick what you wanted, right? Uh, depending on what your output Okay, so you could pick uh, what what type of drying you want. You could pick that basically. Yeah, the, well, the True Press was able to. The True Press had multiple types of drying, and you could select whether you wanted that module or after install it. Uh, that was certainly there at the last mm -hmm. innovations, and of course, this this innovations we will see HP following a similar uh, platform where you can select yeah. what is your machine going to do, what are the requirements, and therefore, yeah. uh, what dryer do I need? Because you know, from the OEMs up until this point, it's been, you can have this speed, you can have this quality, you can have this lay down. Ah, you want it all at the same time. That's a problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and a lot of times that was really about the drying, Martin, right? Um, and of course, drying is it. But that was, that was my point. Yeah. And I, that was my point, because I mean, when I, when I see Adfos and I see, see the, the technology that you provide and, and I see you know, wider machines, faster machines, uh, higher productivity, higher quality, all these things. I was just thinking that, okay, if, if, if it's a matter of getting the water away from the paper, it seems that Adfos is a really, really great uh, option to put into these machines. And I was just wondering, of course, uh, you work with, with the OEMs, so some of the machines are pre-equipped with it. But I was also thinking about the existing portfolio of, of machines in the market. Maybe there was a business opportunity to actually have some add-ons to these and then maybe just make them more productive, right? And, yes. I, and it's, it's not because I know anything. I was just, you know, trying to, a logic consequence, basically. No, no, you're, I mean, you're, you're exactly right. We're, we're also the only um, solution partner that can, I think, that can provide aftermarket dryer installs into the existing Hewlett-Packard range of uh, page-wide press machines. So we work in that, we've worked in that for many years, uh, that's since about 2016, 17. Okay. We've been doing aftermarket additions to 200s and 400s for, for exactly that, Martin. You know, they want to move the machine into new markets or the market's grown to be able to accept that digital. Um, and, and of course, HP's head technology uh, and uh, upgrades to the presses has not stopped. You can take a 12-year-old T200 and bring it right up to today's quality and capability, but the dryer is a problem. Now, with our uh, small yeah, yeah, yeah. small booster, we can normally, uh, normally there is always a space to fit, is what we say. Um, I mean, Screen is also someone who follows this, mm -hmm. this pattern, um, but in the larger, uh, uh, single pass uh, inkjet machines. This is a, a, a very much a stable part of business. Right? Uh, so certainly something. I so when want. when you um, yeah, Sorry. so when you have decided to exhibit at Innovation Days, um, obviously as you say, some of the machines may have your equipment already installed, and some sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. Um, but when at your booth, for example, will you then uh, be talking about the? Uh, the aftermarket product, or will you more talk in general terms about the advantage of, of having uh, ha having your technology? Well, we, we'll be doing both, and uh, I think we we have such good relationships with all of the OEMs that uh, put, putting in an aftermarket solution, if a customer wanted that, I we've never had a block. Um, we've always had that great relationship of how do we do it, right? I mean, we're a technology um, business, we're a technology industry. That's interesting. How do we do it? Is always the the path forward. We, we're not often hit by by a roadblock. So we'll be talking with customers about upgrading solutions in the market, what we can offer, uh, and also what we can offer in the wider sense, right? Um, post print, um, post post uh, post printing solutions, pre printing solutions. This is quite important. Where heavily in the priming and the OPV market, as well as the full color, uh, four or six ink set um, color drying. So it's it's all about pre and post um, f for those materials. So um, 
Are you looking forward to go to Lucerne? I mean, there's something special about Hunkula, right? Um, that that level playing yeah, field. Yeah. It's, it's quite nice. It's an incredible show, and I, I always look forward to this time time of year. Uh, it's a shame Fashion Act gets gets missed, and and I'm looking forward to seeing what um, what Hunkula is bringing to the market and what demands they will will see on us. Because you know, for Adfos, we um, we think about the final solution being at the end of the finishing where is the product going to be used right and what durability does it require and what drying it will need in the press to be able to handle those those processes right uh, uh, dry is as dry as your finishing process requires um, is something that a, a yeah. close customer of mine says and and at Hunkler yeah. what Adfos will have to deliver for our OEMs will be determined by Hunkler themselves and by the pressures and forces and capabilities that they're bringing to processing um, that printed material. So uh, Hunkler are in many ways setting the bar for us. Right? Mm. Um, uh, one thing I forgot to ask you before and now I just I just remind, I remember myself it was like uh, you uh, you invented the AdFoss technology years ago. I mean, when you when you go to the R and D lab today, what is the next thing? Is it more energy efficient? Is it uh, new ways of doing things? Where where do you see AdFoss uh, from a technology perspective? But where, in what directions do you develop yourself? Uh, I mean, right now um, we. we it's, it's energy efficiency, right? That, that's the point. I mean, but we, I think we, we were founded by um, a group of globally renowned physicists. They have always had uh, a focus throughout their career on energy efficiency, on non-fossil materials, on, on doing this. And for the markets to now start saying, and the producers and the, and the, and the people in the streets are saying, hey, we have a global problem we need to solve. Um, we need to m have a more energy efficient process. We need to not use um, CO2 producing production methods. And for us, that's amazing. I mean, for the world to be adopting what we've been waving our flag for nearly 30 years is is really uh, quite something. So we're, we're bringing to market two new technologies at the moment, uh, which is the Boost Air uh, Dryer. This is high speed. Um, high-speed single-pass array um, materials bringing in huge savings per kilowatt per meter squared and uh, th through through mass transfer technologies, air airflow um, enabling technologies and uh, we're also bringing in a intelligent dryer control system which is seeing already are 50 percent more energy efficient than competitive systems dryers become another 40 or 50 percent more energy efficient. Um, that's not just good from an environmental perspective, but when it's 32 cent per kilowatt, um, s small savings, big savings like this in the dryer um, can amount over the year to, to hundreds of thousands of euros in um, running costs for your tw 20 inch systems, right? This is not, uh, not something to, to belittle, you know? And that's a very good KPI when you're selling your solution. Right? Yeah, it's um, it's been a really interesting year, actually, Martin. I'm, I'm sure Frank talked to you about this, but, but when we've been in a system with the energy changes where a 20-inch system can have an ROI in less than a year, this is this is unbelievable, right, um, from a hardware perspective. Just on the energy savings alone, without taking into account the fact your, your press is running twice the speed, um, you know, if, if you're putting 50% extra speed on, on your existing press for 10% of, of the list price um, in additional capability, this this is really uh, an interesting point. Um, or at least that's that's always been the argument, right? But uh, uh, operation costs now are, are becoming very, very tough. Um, gas, the, the concern over the supply of gas long term has started to move us uh, into the analog market as well as the the analog printing companies that we know that are partners with us yeah, are saying hey so that could be replacement even in anal Abs in a re replacement of gas for for heat yeah so so we're, we're you know we're having that conversation already with with many and we've, we've done a few already our partners who know us from inkjet have said hey can, can you help i have this behemoth gas dryer and I want to get rid of it. Um, 
you know, Morton, we're across a wide range of, of markets um, and uh, that's the beautiful thing that I have in, in printing is I get to look at what my colleagues are doing in steel processing, coil coating, uh, automotive and I get to leverage and pick, oh that's an incredible piece of technology that, that they're doing for this radiator annealing and, and, and I can leverage it over into inkjet and uh, that's also beneficial as, uh, as all of the inkjet providers um, increase their capabilities, right? Must be fun. Uh, James, I uh, look forward to see you in Lucerne in just a few weeks time. So uh, thank you for your time here on Inkis. No, thanks very much, Martin.